Good evening and welcome to May the 17th, 2021 Finance Committee's uh, agenda for tonight. Before we go into our agenda items, I'm going to call uh, and recognize Captain Charles Smith. He's from the Salvation Army. He's going to make a presentation. If Mr. Smith, if you could step to that mic and sure. the floor is yours at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Um, at this time, I'd like to pray uh, for the mayor and for the city council. And then uh, just say a few things to uh, thank you guys for um, helping us um, in the last three years that we've been here. So let's pray. Our fathers, we come before your throne of grace this day. We pray for the members of the city council and their responsibilities. Help them in the positions as they meet here in the session. And may they never forget that what is said and done here is not done in a corner, but always under your scrutiny. May they feel the weight of their responsibility before you and remember the influence of a good example, that all who come to this place may have a stronger faith in government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Be with these thy servants in this place in all things great and small, so that small things become great and great things become possible. Father of mercies, bless their loved ones and their families. Make their homes sanctuaries of love and peace, where they may find spiritual resources for the strain and the pressures of their, of their responsibility here. Give us now thy spirit to guide us and direct us in our thinking, that when the day work is over, we may merit thy well done. May the love of God, which is broader than the measure of a man's mind, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is sufficient for all of our needs, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, who shall lead us into all truth, be with us all this day. Amen. Amen. Mr. Reed, council members, um, I, I want to say thank you. Thank you to the citizens of the Salvation, I mean, to the citizens of Muskogee in helping us, the Salvation Army, each year to do the most good. Whether it's through our uh, utility assistance, our food pantry, clothing vouchers, disaster work, or even Christmas, we want to say thank you. When we came to Muskogee three years ago, we did not know what was set before us, those that are, have no hope, the lost, the least, and the last. But we knew that we cannot help our neighbors without the help of Jesus, who is the captain of our salvation, and we acknowledge that the battle is the Lord's, and without him we could do nothing. Whether through food or financial assistance during the flood of 2019, or even in the distractions of COVID-19, we were able to care for several in our county. From March 1st to July 31st of 2020, we dispatched our disaster mobile feeding unit and served over 9,000 meals, 10,000 cold refreshments, 34,000 snacks to those that were hungry. We were able to deliver 401 emergency food boxes to the hopeless. We, we provided 120 supplies, such as diapers and wipes to those that had infants, and passed out 160 hygiene packs to those that needed those items. But we at the Salvation Army um, also was able to give rental assistance to 16 families for a total of $10,049 and help provide utility assistance for 40 families for a total of $3,462.44, altogether serving over 10,296 persons in Muskogee County. But you know, we couldn't do this alone, could we? We had many volunteers that helped us that served over 2,000 hours. And most importantly, we were able to provide emotional, spiritual care to 457 individuals which represents why we do what we do, all to the glory of God. And in saying this, Mr. Reed and Council, I would like to present you this frame flag of the Salvation Army to remind you and City Council that we have served this county for 121 years, and we would like to ask you to pray for us, my wife and I, Captain Terry Smith, as we move from this appointment on June 20th and move forward to the work at Jonesboro, Arkansas and to pray for the incoming officer, Major Kerry Booth, as we present this flag to you on this day, May 17, 2021. So thank you. To Captain Smith and to his wife as well, uh, on behalf of Mayor Marlon Coleman, and all of the council here um, in the city of Muskogee. You know, we all have an assignment in life and when we go out there and do it, one of the things we wanna do at the end 
of our assignment is to look back and hope that uh, the place where we tried is better off than it was when you came. And that's something that you guys can truly say is that Muskogee is a better place because you touched our hearts with your work and with your deeds. And we wish you well in your endeavors to come. And we you. once again just thank you for doing God's assignment here in the city of Muskogee. We appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank, thank you, Council. You. Have a good night. At this point, we'll go into our agenda items at this time. Item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of May the 3rd, 2021, or take other necessary action. Reviewing our minutes, are there any corrections or additions to our minutes? Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our minutes. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments April 24th, 2021 through May the 7th, 2021, or take other necessary action. We have a report from the Purchasing Committee. The Purchasing Committee did meet this afternoon and we approve the claims. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our claims. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Consider approval of a contract between the City of Muskogee and Hilldale Public Schools to furnish law enforcement and school resource officer functions for the school district campuses or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller? Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, this is our annual agreement that we do with Hilldale High School to provide uh, law enforcement officers. Um, they contract with us and pay a portion of their salaries uh, commensurate with the time they spend there. Uh, all parties are in agreement. Um, Superintendent Eric Puckett is here from, uh, from Hilldale. If we have any questions, um, uh, Chief Teehee is here as well. Uh, we do recommend approval and be happy to answer any questions. This is a great asset to the community and to the school, and so I move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any discussion from council? Roll call, please. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stow? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Item number three passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval to award a contract to SVC Enterprises, LLC, in the amount of $140,000 for the exterior rehabilitation of seven structures funded through the Muskogee Rehabilitation and Revitalization Program or take other necessary action. Ms. Callahan. Yes, thank you, um, Deputy Mayor and Council. This is uh, actually committee, I'm sorry. Um, this is the um, standard rehabilitation project that we have that's funded through the City of Muskogee Foundation. This project of these seven houses will finalize the grant funding that is for the fiscal year 21, 20, uh, 2021. And so we have um, the seven houses here. Um, I'll run through them briefly. These two are still in area eight. We have uh, starting area nine. And these are our before pictures. And uh, we had the bid packet prepared and our three qualified contractors were sent the package. It was also advertised and on our uh, website. But we just received the one bid from uh, the contractor SVC Enterprises LLC and they um, bid the maximum amount that's required on each structure at 20,000. There's uh, mostly uh, the cost of construction as everyone knows has gone up and also the roofs are the main priority and those are an expensive cost. So it, um, may not look like there's much done to the house, but we hope that there'll be a difference when we do our after pictures. We're real pleased with SVC Enterprises and do recommend approval. Any questions for Ms. Callahan? Yes, Ms. Lott, Mr. Chairman, may be recognized? Yes. Ms. Callahan, could you go back to those first two pictures? Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Okay, this one here is one we getting ready to do? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the next one also? Yes. Those were in area eight. We're kind of waiting to see the, how the contractors did on their uh, work. Where is this house here located? 
Um, this one, 1019 North 11th, is right at that curve. It's right across the street from Smokehouse, uh, former Smokehouse Bob's. I was just talking about this house yesterday. And the other one, I'm glad you got that too, because that, that rock house? Yes. That roof was, that, right, that house right there? Can't you can't see it from here. Right. But that roof was, you know, was a really bad Very shape. bad. And that's maybe <coughs> all that he has um, done, but it'll at least let him stay in the house. Well, like I say, I'm glad that uh, I want to see this after it's done. Because, well, mm -hmm. I tell you what. He'll be able to do the roof and the porch so that it'll secure the house for him. Now, when we get through Area 9, I know you said the funding will now, will we continue? Like, when all this is done, will we start over again? Or how's that process going to work? My understanding is we'll, um, We've got a few more in Area 9, and then we'll open Area 10. But I wasn't aware of them applying for it to start over again. I don't know that the foundation, you know. The reason I was asking this because people ask me this question all the time. So I said, get it too, yeah. you know, I want to make sure tonight I, you know, I know, know what the answer to give them. I don't, I don't look for it to be funded uh, again. So it's. Outside of the fun foundation, is there any other possibilities of funding for programs like this? Uh, we had initially, and it looked a long time ago, for the community development block grant or with the home funds. But when you do any um, work with federal funds, you have to bring the whole structure up to code. And there were times that we were getting bids that you could build a brand new house. And actually, we did build new houses rather than doing the rehab on the same footprint that people had enough room. and. So it's, it's just so costly to do rehabs to the whole house when you have to go inside and uh, electrical plumbing and heat and air all have to be brought up to code. All right. This was like a five-year, was this program like a five-year program this, this in the last beginning? last time, yeah. And this is the last of that? No, no. This is the beginning of the five years. Okay. Yeah, we've got, I think, three more years. This was the first, of the first or second of the new years. So. They had uh, they funded it to go all the way through the rest of the areas that had not been okay. That's what um, I was trying to not, understand. Not gone all the way through the program yet. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we were not going to miss some houses. That no. Yeah. Okay. That was the the intent from the the foundation was to make sure that they granted it long enough. We were able to go to each of the identified areas, and and go through there. Thank you. This program here is one of the best programs I think the city has done. When did it actually start? In nineteen, I mean. Uh, 20 2008 2007 yeah, okay. 2008 and then uh, 2011 was when we uh, applied to the foundation Thank I, you. I believe there are additional um, money sources through the Cherokee and uh, Creek tribes if the citizens home if they are actual uh, uh, card holders from those tribes I believe there's additional help that we could look at if the, uh, they happen to be inside the Creek or Cherokee Nation and happen to be a Creek or Cherokee citizen, there are funds available to help with their houses as well. Particularly right now, I would like to say, out there to anyone watching, if you were affected by the storm, by the freeze, there is uh, a lot of help coming out of the Creek and Cherokee Nation. And if you'll go to their uh, pages, to their uh, .org pages, you'll see at the bottom of the page where you can fill out for assistance and put some pictures from the damages that you had during the flood and they will come out and help and assist with that and there's additional assistance money in that as well now is that membership only that is you would need to be a member of the tribe and i believe possibly located if you're a cherokee you probably need to be in the cherokee nation and that would probably go for the creek as well um, if there are leftover funds after the Creeks have serviced their citizens, I believe they could apply those to <coughs> some additional tribal members that may live in the Creek Nation. The same would go with the Cherokees. I believe when it's medical assistance or whatever that, if they run out of, if they run out of, if they still have funds left, uh, but there are people outside of their area that can help, they can apply those in that area to the different tribal member. It's all BIA at some point and then tribal on the ground. Thank you for the information. Any other questions? Roll call, please. I don't have a motion. We don't have a motion. Move for approval. Second. Second. Okay. Now roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Item number four passes, and with that item passing, that is our final item for our finance committee. I wanted to welcome y'all to the. Muskogee Public Works Committee, May 17th of 2021. 
Item number one, please. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of May 3rd, 2021, or take other necessary action. Move for approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two is stricken from the agenda. Item number three, please. Consider approval of final payment estimate $19,584 for RLC Controls Incorporated for the wastewater treatment plant SCADA project or take other necessary action. Mike Stewart. Actually, Mr. Morton put this item together, oh. so he's going to address it for you. Okay. I'll do my best. All right. Uh, this item is for the uh, SCADA rehab system that we did at the wastewater treatment plant. What the SCADA system does is it reports from our... Uh, uh, remote uh, lift stations uh, back to the wastewater treatment plant as well as controls uh, various e uh, equipment there at the wastewater treatment plant uh, as well. This system is important for a uh, multitude of functions, primarily a digester, temperature control, uh, as well as, as I spoke to earlier, um, lift station controls. So if we have a problem in our lift stations, this SCADA system will um, alert us to any major uh, issues that we have out there and we can fix the problems. Um, RLC controls, they did a fantastic job out there and they've completed their work to our standards and we recommend approval. We have a motion. Move for approval. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. <clears throat> Item passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval of low bid from Vance Brothers Incorporated in the amount of $1,592,068.81 for the microsurfacing Northeast Zone project <clears throat> or take other necessary action. So Mr. I Stout. will, yeah, actually, Mr. Reeves is going to assist me with this, but uh, I will tell you before we start our slideshow, uh, this is part of our Northeast Zone uh, Street program. And uh, it's also part of that $6 million that's set back for that uh, particular zone. Uh, if you'll remember, we are doing that mill and overlay project currently, and uh, we have that uh, going to conclude about $3.5 million. Uh, this project, uh, we had earmarked one6 for the uh, microsurfacing, and as you can see, it did come in uh, in the projected cost. So we still feel like we're on target for that $6 million, and we'll continue to do uh, more repairs in the northeast zone. I will uh, tell you that uh, if you're not familiar with the micro sealing product, it's a three inch, uh, three eighths inch aggregate in an asphalt type slurry mix uh, with silica sand and, and some cement to, to bind it. But it's really just a sealer and it's only gonna just seal up the streets that we apply it to. So if that street's got a little bit of a rough texture to it, this will take very <coughs> little bit of that out. This project is really meant to seal up the street to get us more life out of it until we can come back around and the next zone work when we come back to that district uh, to, to actually do a better uh, or a more uh, detailed repair on it, maybe a mill and overlay at that time. So again, it's a $1.6 um, million dollar projected cost. It came in at 1592. We had two bidders uh, that uh, bid on this and slurry seal or micro sealing is not really a common product uh, that a lot of people do. That's why we don't get a lot of, of, uh, of uh, bidders. But uh, Vance Brothers and Intermountain Slurry uh, have both worked for the city of Muskogee. They're both pre-qualified. They're both good uh, uh, companies. Uh, Intermountain actually did this, the microsurfacing that's downtown, and Vance just did the last district that we did. We're very pleased with both of them. As you well know, we can always improve in what we do, but, and we're learning as we go uh, with the amount of street work we're doing right now on what are the better applications for these type streets. So. Uh, we do think we've got a good project put before you, and uh, we do recommend uh, Vance Brothers as the low bid. I will tell you it's a, just a considerable, it's very minor amount higher than the last bid we got, and that's because we included the crack sealing uh, in the bid price. We want to make sure that we get the crack sealed, and we did it by square yard. And saying all that, I'll turn it over to Jeff to, to do a PowerPoint and get a little more technical. Good evening. Um, Yes, as Mike said, we did take bids on this. Uh, the qualified bidders were pre-qualified, ODOT certified. The duration of the project is 180 days. Um, the, uh, this is a, 
kind of hard to read slide, but uh, this will include the northeast zone. The $6 million were allocated to streets and road improvements for that zone. Um, the uh, uh, streets will be listed uh, on the website. The, the uh, uh, map will be also on the website when the project takes, takes off. Um, I think that's about it. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we did include uh, a list of the streets in your packet uh, so you can see what streets we're actually going to do. And as Jeff stated, the, uh, the map is going to be up and active when we start the project, and it will be updated as we progress with the project. And staff does move for approval. Recommend approval. Recommend approval. Sorry. Move for approval. Second. Discussion? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Chairman, may I be recognized? Yes. I, uh, I went and looked at one on Shawnee Street, uh, West Shawnee, and the driveway. As a matter of fact, this, is cons this uh, constituent called me, and I went out and looked at it, at it, and I went and looked at it again today, and it looks good. Only part I, I didn't like about it was that when they went to, up to her driveway, the first, they didn't go to her driveway. I mean, they went to the driveway, but they left a hump. So they went and put the asphalt back in her driveway, but they didn't, I like things straight and in line. I wish they would have just, you know, made it straight. Mm -hmm. Don't just go here and go here like that. I don't like that kind of work. Yeah. I want it kind of straight. Then it makes the job look better. So if y'all have time, I'd like for y'all to go back and look at that and, you know, see what I'm talking about. Well, we'll, we'll definitely do that, Mr. Van. We got several down 40th Street we're working on as well, too. So. Uh, Jeff and I will get out tomorrow and look at it, and I understand what you're saying. Uh, more aesthetic job. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, she can get her car in and out now. Oh, yeah. Uh, but what you're simply saying is if we'd spend a little more effort and get that line straight, it would be more aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. We can do that. All right. I'll turn the floor back over to Ms. Sherman. Ms. Sherman, I'm sorry. Thank you, Ivory. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Motion passes. Item number five, please. Consider approval of the following bids. A, number two, cover material, APAC, $15 per ton, as lowest bid. B, aggregate, Youngman Rock, $7.40 per ton, as best bid. C, three-inch pit run, Youngman Rock, $9.75 per ton, as lowest bid. D, number 67, Wash Rock ODOT Specs, APAC, $12.50 per ton, as lowest bid. E, Asphalt Sand, APAC, $7.25 per ton, as lowest bid. F, Fill Sand, APAC, $7.25 per ton, as lowest bid. G, Concrete, Type B and C, Tulsa Asphalt, $48 per ton, as lowest bid. H, Hot Cold Patching Material, Tulsa Asphalt, $89 per ton, as lowest bid. I, 12-inch pit run, Youngman Rock, $11 per ton, as lowest bid. And J, limestone screening, Youngman Rock, $8 per ton, as lowest bid, or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, these are the uh, material that the street department uses uh, in their road repair program for the summer. Uh, actually, it's all year round. Uh, the bids that are before you are all the lowest bids except for B, which was the aggregate. And we want to uh, do the best bid there from APAC uh, because that price is picked up. So the city actually has to send their dump trucks over to get the, the uh, material and bring it back. And the low bids, Corey, is uh, 12 miles or uh, 30 miles away, and APAC is 12 miles away. So time and fuel uh, makes the uh, bid from APAC better. So we recommend approval. These are all low bids. There is a very minor increase in pricing. Uh, for example, number two cover material is up by 50 cents, and number two covers, covers what we used to use for chip sealing. So it's a 3 8 inch aggregate. Uh, sand remained the same price. Uh, the majority of these went up by about 50 cents per item, so per ton. Do recommend approval, and I'll answer any of your questions. Move for approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Motion passes. Item number six, please. 
Consider approval of the lowest bid to Muskogee Ready Mix for concrete materials as follows. A, 3,500 PSI concrete at $109 per cubic yard. B, 3,500 PSI high early strength concrete at $110 per cubic yard. C, 3,000 PSI concrete at $105 per cubic yard. D, Portland Dry Mason at $15 per sack. E, Flow Fill Concrete at $80 per cubic yard. And F, City Pay Dray at $65 or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, these are uh, the concrete bids that uh, the street department actually uses the concrete for uh, road repair throughout the year. Uh, most every one of these, uh, actually every one of them is up by $5. Uh, per item. Uh, I will explain to you a, a little bit of it. The 3,500 PSI, that's uh, 3,500 pounds per square inch is what it takes to break concrete at that, uh, at that uh, level. So the, the high early that we use on 3,500s is when they actually add a, a product in there to accelerate the cure time. So in the winter when it's really cold, we're trying to get it cured. Uh, we ac actually ask for high early to get it to, to, get it to set quicker. The 3,000 PSI is a driveway mix. That's what most driveways in town are, so that's what we use when we go out and repair uh, driveways. Uh, the sack mix, I guess you understand. Flow fill is uh, concrete without the, the aggregate in it, and we use that quite a bit in voided areas where we're trying to get it filled in and, and, and uh, shored up. And in the dry charge, uh, concrete trucks uh, are pretty expensive to run, so if you order under two, uh, cubic yards of concrete, they add what they call a dray to it, and that simply means if you order under two yards, you're going to pay an additional $65 for that delivery. So we do recommend the bids. They're all uh, the low, and we've used the ready mix plenty in the past. And by the way, if they're uh, full and can't supply our concrete, we do go to the next bidder when that happens, and that's part of our purchasing procedure. But we use low bid when we can. Recommend approval and answer any of your questions. Move for approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. All right, the motion passes. We have several signed up to speak tonight. Uh, Madam Chair, I would like to suspend the rules and to give our speakers a total of five minutes each to speak this evening. Okay. Do we need them? You got a motion, you need a second. 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 Roll call, please. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. All righty, we'll come up to the mic. Whenever I call your name, please give your name and your address. Mr. Josh Terrell. Josh Terrell, I live at 4009 Eagle Crest Drive. I um, was watching last week and the issue came up about the hat box sports complex and from what I heard uh, the city parks manager brought up wanting to redo bathrooms concession this and that and I think someone asked him what condition the fields were in who's going to take care of the fields and he was asked do you think the fields are in good shape now and he said yes if you've been out there and you play out there you know that is not true um, I brought some pictures. I coach a little league tournament team. I've been coaching for 11 years, been all over the state playing. Um, if you look at the first picture that I brought, that's in Chandler, Oklahoma. And we played our regional tournament there when three years ago when we were 10 and under. One guy took, took care of this field. There was two fields that looked just like this. Um, the next picture is ballpark we've been to. Of course, that's in Branson. but. Um, I'll just get down here to the ones that, if you see the picture where you're walking up a sidewalk with fence on both sides, that picture, this is in Bigsby. And I went out there last week, took these pictures and ran into their field crew. And I've got an audio recording of the gentleman speaking. There are six guys on their field crew for the city full time. They take care of all the ballpark, 12 soccer fields, lacrosse field, two water parks, the lake, just six of them. I've been told that the three guys that he talked about last week, they take care of just hat box. They, I don't know about the soccer fields, but the fields at Bigsby for these guys to take care of didn't happen overnight. Um, you can go down 
this picture here, if you play baseball, there shouldn't be a three, four inch lip that drops down for your kids to trip over while they're trying to field the ball. Um, the outfield grass out there at Bigsby is better than our infield grass. There is, there are kids hurt every practice out there that take a ground ball that hits something on an uneven playing surface, hits them in the face. Um, I have to hit ground balls to my six-year-olds and avoid hitting certain spots on every field we practice on. The concession stands, they're talking about getting teams to play Muskogee. Redoing concession stands and bathrooms is not going to do it. We play in Jinx. We're playing again this weekend there. We use porta potties on our coach pitch fields. The main bathrooms are 300 yard walk to go to. Coaches don't sign up for a nice bathroom and concession stand. We sign up because the fields are in good shape. Um, hat box is one of the best set up facilities I've, we can get. As far as canopies, at Jinx, you can't set up a shade canopy. There's nets over the seating areas, kind of where you can sit around the home plate area to protect you from foul balls. That's a big plus that we want. Uh, shaded seating is great, but most people bring their own shade canopy. They set it up. Jinx, we can't do that. Muskogee, you can set it up on both sides. I've been out there. It's 50 feet from one fence to the other. You can set your shade canopy up. There's plenty of room to walk. Um, go back to the back pages or the back pictures. Um, after the radar pictures that I took. And you can see the, how crowded it is right there. And this ballpark has, on average, probably 80 teams a weekend that sign up to play. And you can you see the porta potties in the picture next to the blue canopy. That's the bathrooms that we use. There's two of them. And, you know, there's two, 300 people out there. And you can see the pictures of the fields that we play on. They're nothing spectacular like Bigsby. Bigsby's fields sit empty because they got away from U-Trip. But there was over a thousand teams last year that Bigsby ran through there. And now that nice complex has had less than 50 teams this year play there. And it's hurt the city of Bigsby in tax revenue. Um, our fields, let me see. You can tell which ones they are. The pitcher, let me get back to it. There's a couple of pictures I took that look like Muskogee. This is one of them you'll see. Uh, this was in Midwest City. We played there in Fred Myers Ballpark. The fields were the worst fields I've ever been to. And there's 15 to 20 teams there every tournament. And it's because people are showing up just because of the reputation that if it rains, we're gonna get the fields ready. Um, the radar picture I took was Saturday morning. Mr. Terrell, yes, your time's up. Oh, sorry. Lance Mitchell. Please state your name and address. Lance Mitchell, 2520 Elmira. Uh, I just wanted to touch a little bit of what he was saying, talking about the baseball. Um, I was the director of Muskogee Youth Baseball the last year before we reverted over to the new, and then now it's OK Kids. Um, under Muskogee Youth Baseball, we, we attempted to get the city at that time to uh, put a little money into the fields. We told them we'd match what what we had in our account if they would put that amount in. We were told no multiple times. Uh, so just to kind of touch on what Josh was talking about, uh, the money we can put into that because those fields can be money makers financially for this city. Uh, when I was the director, the la that last year we had every field except for the 14 and unders had a double header every night, three nights a week for would be seven field, uh, eight fields, double headers, both nights, teams playing three nights a week. My son, the last year he played, we might have gotten one game per week on only two fields on the kid pitch side and maybe a game apiece on the t-ball and coach pitch side. So there's been a decline from going from U-Triple-S-A to OK Kids to where if we went back to U-Trip, we could bring more teams in. We could get uh, 
more teams to come here. Muskogee, when I was growing up, Muskogee had ball games going all week long, every weekend, all summer long. It'd be good for the businesses here in town. It'd be good for Muskogee in general. Thank you. Cooper Holman. <clears throat> Cooper Holman, 2605 Boston Street here in Muskogee. I am uh, here t with these fellow coaches uh, to touch on Hatbox. Um, I'll start just by saying for the last 30 years between playing, coaching, and now directing tournaments, I've been a part of that. And I have seen it decline so fast and so rapidly that it's a wonder to me why the city has let it go on the way it has for as long as it has. Um, on a regular basis, you have teams that will bypass Muskogee on a daily basis to go play Salisaw or Stigler from Bixby and Broken Arrow and Tulsa. We're not asking for a whole lot. What we are asking for is that you do better by these kids and the youth of Muskogee, the coaches that put their blood, sweat, and tears and raise young men and women out there. We're asking that you better these facilities, not just for them, but the community as a whole. I am putting on a tournament out here called Innings for Inclusion for Kelly B. Todd. I am pushing to get two news crews to come cover it. Mayor Coleman's gonna be a part of it. Braylon Deadman, Timothy Baptist Church. It's gonna be a huge deal, and it's going on the same weekend as the chili and barbecue cook-off. And it's sad that I have to come to City Hall after I've been to the Parks and Rec manager and head of Muskogee Parks and Rec to their office for eight years with the exact same complaints. They mow when it's too wet to have mowers on there. We have ruts a foot and a half deep in the outfield. Who's going to be in charge of that when one of these kids trip and break their ankle out there? Because you can't be bothered to get off and weed eat a two-foot spot. Let's run the mower over it and run the fields even more so. It, it's as, as a member of this community, I'm almost embarrassed that I have teams coming from all over the state to come and play at our complex. And it's ridiculous because it's one of the biggest ones in the state. And I mean, I have not, I've been from here to Mustang and, and to Durant and to Kansas and to all these places. And they're, they don't have half of what we got. We're located right off of a highway. We have 18 fields from softball to 14U, a water park, a skate park. There is no reason that we cannot get over, over a million in revenue coming through there yearly easily, if not more. And I just, I come up here just to touch on those and to let you guys know that I am having a tournament here and that next year I would hate to take my four to 6,000 people and go have it down the road in Shakota because at the bare minimum we could not take care of our fields. So I ask and I would even challenge anybody here, come walk those fields with me. There's a two and a half foot drop from behind the pitcher's mound to center field on every field out there. That is how uneven they are. Home plates have holes in them and are dry rotted. It's to my understanding, we've had brand new bases out there for a year and a half that have not even been put out. Shade structures were purchased last fall that are sitting out there that have not been put out. What is the city doing exactly? Like I said, I hate to come in here and take it out on you guys because it's not your fault. But for eight years, I've had these same complaints, and they've fallen on deaf ears. And not just me, but the community as a whole is getting tired of it. We think that our children deserve better, and we think that our community deserves better. And we're going to leave it up to you guys and the mayor to give us better, or you can keep losing teams to Coweta and Broken Arrow and wherever else and lose your revenue. That's on you guys. But I thank you for your time, and we appreciate you. Thank you. Mark Winters, Daniel Hannon, Donnie Hutchins, Nick Thompson. I'm uh, Nick Thompson. Uh, Josh asked me to come by and say a few words. My, uh, I live at 50, 5215 Gulick Street. I apologize. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I've had. Uh, I've got a, a son who graduates high school this year who's played baseball at this facility since he was four. And 
from that time to now even, there has been obviously, as we all have heard, rapid decline in the quality of the fields, the number of teams that we have playing. And, uh, you know, part of that is just simply the money not being spent on the facility. Uh, and I believe it was 2008 or nine, uh, Bentley Park in Bixby that Josh showed you pictures of, it was when that facility first opened because my, my oldest son actually played there when they opened opening weekend. So it was the very first time games had ever been played there. And it kind of became the go-to place in Eastern Oklahoma, which replaced Muskogee. Because when Marie Gassaway was here uh, years ago, there were teams from Arkansas that would literally use Muskogee as a, as a middle point. Tulsa, Oklahoma City teams would come here, Arkansas teams would come here, and they would have huge tournaments every weekend. I mean, there wasn't a weekend that went by, there wasn't a bunch of teams coming into play. And now they're, they can't make a tournament here. And part of uh, just piggybacking on some of the comments that, that were made, I think they're spot on. The, uh, you know, I, the last time I signed a team up to play in Muskogee, uh, there was rain on Thursday. And on Friday, there was 85, 90 degrees and sunshine. And Friday night, about 5 o'clock, we were told that the tournament was canceled for the entire weekend. The director at the time said it was out of his control. He didn't make that decision. Somebody else made that decision. Don't know who. But there were close to 40 teams, I think, that weekend that were coming to Muskogee. And he scrambled and was able to, to move the tournament to Shakota and to Coweta. And all of those teams still participated, but didn't come here. They actually went to Shakota and went to Kuwaita and spent the weekend. Uh, I never signed up again to come play here, uh, even though I played here when I was a kid, and I would love to play here more often. I've got a kid that's 14 years old. He's my youngest. And all three of my kids uh, have played since they were four years old. So we've spent literally thousands of dollars of our personal money, not to mention all the money my parents have spent, you know, at out to eat, uh, through gate fees, through, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, you go to the drive through at Brahms. I mean, you're spending money in the town, and that ends up going elsewhere. I mean, we just spent a weekend in Jinx this weekend. Um, there's 238 teams, I think, last time I checked, that are going to play in Oklahoma City the weekend and Memorial Weekend. I don't know that we're having anything, but 238 teams in one, one uh, facility. Uh, and to reiterate on one of the comments, uh, not to be totally negative, I do agree that of all the places that I've been, from Grapevine, Texas, to Kansas City, to Arkansas, I mean, we've been all over the place over the last 14 years, that Muskogee is unique in a way that most complexes aren't, they don't have what we have here, a water park in the same parking lot as your baseball facility. Uh, one parking area where you can park and you can go to any age group. You don't have to get in your car if you've got two teams. I've done that. I've had teams that were different age groups, and we play in the same town, but one, one complex is, is in one spot, and you have to literally drive to the other to get to your other team. And so here you park in one spot, and you can access uh, every age group from one entrance. And so there's so much that they have going for them. But then when you come out and you get onto the fields and you see what we have, it, it, nobody will come because the facilities, I mean, if, if we do have rain in Muskogee and you've got mothers of coach pitch and t-ball kids coming out pushing little kids in a, in a stroller or whatever, uh, they need a four-wheel drive stroller to get through the mud sometimes to, yeah, because there's no concrete walk paths. I mean, there's just the little things sometimes you don't think of that, that make things uh, – a lot easier for, or a, a lot more desirable, so to speak. And so Josh, I know, touched on the canopies and things like that, and it just seems like a small deal, but, I mean, it is something that uh, that we consider whenever we decide to go somewhere. So anyway, I hope you uh, take those comments to heart, and have a good evening. Thank you, Thompson. Johnny Hutchins. Dalton McClure. Keith Fields. Okay, that concludes and we are adjourned.